Good morning again. Good morning. Hopefully you've been able to get to know each other a little bit. Uh, welcome once again. Welcome once again. So uh, I just wanted to introduce myself a little bit. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming this morning. And I hope that we'll be able to spend some time to uh, slowly study the Bible. Uh, my name is David Ng. I currently live in Malaysia. And this is my family. My wife Beverly. Uh, my daughter is named Alicia. She's seven years old. And my son is uh, two years old. And his name is Elijah. So they're uh, in Malaysia today. Unfortunately, they couldn't uh, follow me here. I, uh, I was born in Australia. So I'm actually Australian by birth. I spent my primary school in England mostly. Uh, my secondary school I spent in Penang, Malaysia, which is where my parents are from. And my university years I spent in uh, Australia. Uh, while I was in uh, university, I went through a period where I questioned the Bible. I questioned the authenticity of the Bible. I questioned uh, the Adventist faith. I spent a number of years out of the church. And uh, I came back to church after going into the party scene, into the drug scene. And experimenting with a lot of different things. And uh, when I came back to the Lord, uh, all broken. I was grateful for what the Lord had done to preserve my life. And uh, I had a burden to help make um, to help make our faith real for young people. So I spent um, uh, quite a bit of time studying about uh, youth ministry. And studying about campus ministry. And uh, during my years out of church, I'd spent a lot of time with uh, Christian fellowships. Uh, the, the other, you know, the Sunday churches, the, uh, the uh, non-denominational type of, uh, you know, like Hillsong and all these types of churches. So I wanted to apply a lot of these things uh, in the Adventist world. I wanted to apply a lot of their techniques in uh, the Adventist world. 
ิ่งที่เรียนรู้มาเนี่ยผมก็เลยอยากจะเอานำมาประยุกต์ใช้กับในกฤษณ์ and uh, anybody heard of the term c a r o o s มีใครเคยได้ยินคำว่า c a r o o s ครับซึ่งเป็นดูแลกลุ่ม c a r o o s c a r o o s Uh, the uh, GC uh, General Conference is uh, talks a lot about that. s o the big group of our General Conference has spoken about the c a group or the group. Well, that term actually came out of uh, Australia when a small group of us said we want to do cell groups, but we don't want to call it cell groups because that's what the Sunday churches call it. Uh, and we thought long and hard, and we came up with the term c a r o o s General Conference เนี่ยก็ใช้คำว่าแคร์กลุ่มซึ่งมันมีที่มาที่ไปมาจากเซลล์กลุ่มของคริสตจักรวันอาทิตย์แต่ว่าเราไม่ต้องการให้มันซ้ำกับของวันอาทิตย์เราก็เปลี่ยนมาเป็นคำว่าแคร์กลุ่มแทน So uh, care actually for us was an acronym that stands for Christ's attitude reflected in everyone คำว่าแคร์เนี่ยเขาจะใช้ตัวย่อนะครับ Christ, Christ, and so that's what it stood for, and uh, we were really passionate about building care groups, growing care groups, multiplying that, um, and. แล้วก็เราจะมีภาระใจที่จะสร้างแคร์กลุ่มเนี่ยให้แข็งแรงแล้วก็ได้ขยายออกไป and uh, we were able to plant uh, three churches I think going on to the fourth church now as a result of uh, this method of plant care groups and campus ministry แล้วเราก็ได้สร้างโบสถ์มาสี่โบสถ์แล้วหลังจากที่ได้ใช้หลักการเนี่ยมา Um, and so, uh, early 2000, or um, I guess in uh, in middle of sorry 2006. I I have been working for a while. Uh, and the Lord called me to um, take a, to walk away from my job and walk away from my business. And uh, spend some time in the wilderness. Oh. Wilderness, having a wilderness experience. Okay. Uh, okay. So in 2006 to 2009, my wife and I we went to the U.S. and we spent some time uh, studying the Bible. And uh, working as Bible workers for a few years. Uh, we were involved in a church plant in San Diego. Uh, which was a Chinese church plant. And then in 2010, we came back to Malaysia. And uh, we, uh, I went back to work. And over the last um, seven, eight years now, um, since 2000, actually I would say, uh, in 2013, um, through God's providence, we were able to set up a Bible school in Malaysia. Uh, my brother is a teacher there. He's a pastor of a uh, church in uh, Malaysia. My younger brother, yes. Um, we also set up a youth conference there called AOI. And uh, 
And uh, every year we have about 20 or 30 young people that come through, 20 or 30 lay people who come through the four to five months of Bible training. And out of that 20 to 30, about uh, 5 to 10 of them will go into full time ministry. And what I'll be sharing with you today is one of the classes that uh, I teach at uh, some. So that's, so that's a little bit about my background. I'm not a pastor. I'm not an evangelist. I'm simply a lay person who has a burden that uh, everyone needs to study the Bible. Uh, I will teach you some of the techniques that I have learned. Uh, and uh, a lot of what I learned came from a person who didn't understand English when he first started studying the Bible. Uh, it came from a person who didn't understand English when he first started studying the Bible. And as he started studying the Bible uh, word by word, he had to look up every word in the dictionary. And as he did that, he found something beautiful. So we're going to take our time over the next one and a half days. To really study the Bible slowly. You know, many times we go to church. And we study the Bible. But we study it so fast. And we cannot hear the voice of God. Many of us study our Bibles every morning. But we study it so fast. That we never listen for God to speak back to us. So I hope, I pray. That over today as we study the Bible, you will pray that you will hear the voice of God speaking to your hearts. I used to go to many churches to teach about care groups. To teach about how to evangelize. But over the years, I've come to realize that our problem today in the Adventist church is not how to do evangelism. It's much more basic. Our problem today is we don't study the Bible. So with that in mind, we're going to go into our first section. And I'm going to preach a sermon, so divine service is starting now. And Sabbath school will be late. I hope you don't mind. So uh, let's kneel for a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father. 
We thank you this morning for bringing each one of us safely to worship you. We thank you for this place of worship. We thank you for our brothers and sisters who have prepared this place. And Father, as each one of us has come here today to seek you, I pray that you would please convict us of our sins even now. Help us to confess our sins. Help us to plead with you for forgiveness. And Father, I pray that the blood of Jesus will cover our sins. For we are sinful human beings and unworthy to be in your presence except for the robe of righteousness that we may receive from Jesus. Cover us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. Help us to be able to hear your voice. Help us to understand the words of life. That our hard hearts may be converted. And you may pierce through our souls. And create in us a clean heart. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Please be our teacher this morning. For this we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so our first passage this morning, we're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 37.
So very dry bones. Dead for a long time. Let me bring you to verse 10. Verse 10, it says, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great um. So we just read the beginning. And this is the ending. What's the ending? An exceeding great army. So this is a story about how to go from very dead people very dry bones to an exceeding great army that is alive. I dare say it is an army of youth. Rightly trained. That will finish this work. Amen. <laughs> it is an army of revived Adventists. <laughs> That will finish this work. So this is a story of how a very dead church can become alive and finish the work. So what are the steps? Let's go back to verse Verse 2. Verse 2, it says, And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. พระองค์ทรงพระเจ้าไปเที่ยวในหมู่กระดูกเหล่านั้นดูเถิดมีกระดูกที่หวานเขานั้นมากมายเหลือเกินและดูเถิดเป็นกระดูกแห้งทีเ
าที่ข้าพเจ้าไปไปนมัสการแล้วก็รู้สึกเนี่ยจิตใจเนี่ยเกี่ยวแห้ง And the elders of the pastor, they want to know how to do better evangelism. And their solution is we need to get evangelism training. In some churches, they believe they love music. And so the solution is, let's have a really good choir. Let's have two to three special music. In church service. My Filipino brothers and sisters. You can relate to that. My Sabahan brothers and sisters too. For some churches, it is better, bigger pathfinders. So let's organize more pathfinder activities. These are all good things. As long as they are second or third to study the Bible. Let me share another example. Um, there was once I went to a church for a couple of Sabbaths. And I observed that uh, everyone was coming late to Sabbath school. So Sabbath school was supposed to start at say 9:30. Everyone was coming at 10 to 10:15. And so the leaders of the church decided that they would put the most important thing. When everyone is at Sabbath school at 10:15 to 10:30. What do you think that was? Mission story. So the video for mission story started playing at 10:30. And then they would have special music, maybe two or three of them. And Sabbath school was at 9:30. When nobody is there. Do you see how we have deprioritized hearing the word of the Lord? In Sabbath afternoon, many churches, many church members, do late activities. They lay on their bed where we should be studying the Bible. Brothers and sisters, there is a famine of the word. In God's church. If there was more hearing of the word, there would be an amazing revival. I hope I've helped you to see this morning that we do a lot of things, but we don't study the Bible.
if we look at all the important moments in Earth's history, if we look at all the important moments in Earth's history, all the turning points, if we think about the early Christian church, before Jesus revealed himself fully to all the disciples, he revealed himself to the two disciples walking back on the road to Emmaus. And as they are walking along, before he reveals himself to them, the Bible tells us that he took them through the books of Moses. And if you read the book Desire of Ages, it tells us that when Jesus had finished teaching them from the books about himself, the word of the Lord burned within their hearts. Brothers and sisters, how often has the word of God burned in your hearts? Or do we just go through the routine of coming to church, hearing a preacher, singing some songs, praying, going home next week, doing the same thing? Or do you come to church to have the Word of God burn within your hearts? Do we come to church with the expectation that we want the Word of God to burn within our hearts? Because when God speaks to you, your heart should burn. When God pierces through your heart, when you have an experience face to face with God, it should burn. But, but instead, we are like dry bones week after week. The Protestant Reformation. The Protestant Reformation. How did that begin? Who was the champion? Martin Luther. How did Martin Luther start the Protestant Reformation? How did he start? Does anybody know? He studied the Bible. Well, what happened was he was doing all this penance. All this penance. He was whipping himself, he was torturing himself physically. Like Paul, he was a priest of priests. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. There was nobody more faithful to the processes and programs and uh, things that the Catholic Church had pre uh, told these priests to do. Martin Luther did them all. But he still felt empty. He still felt unforgiven. He did not have the peace of God in his heart. 
he still felt lost. Could it be that many of us are like Martin Luther? We are an Adventist of Adventists. <laughs> we grew up doing all the things of the Adventist faith. We do all the outreach. We do all the pathfinders. We sing. We pray. We play piano. We do all the forms of our religion. We're still empty. We still feel unsaved. We don't have the peace of God that we It begins with the word. And so after all the whipping and torturing of himself, he was so depressed and his friend, one of his friends, one of his uh, fellow priests, he counseled him go and study. And so Martin Luther started to study. All he did was spend his time studying. And he decided to remove himself away. And he went to the university. And he kept studying. Then at one point his friend said, you know, you can't just study. Can you please share what you've studied? And Martin Luther started to preach right as his friend did. In a small little church near his university. And from that little, little flame, started the Protestant Reformation. The Adventist movement. How did that begin? Who is the champion? William Miller. William Miller. What was his story? He came back from the war. He came back from the war. And uh, he grew up uh, in a Christian family. But he lost his faith. And uh, in his depression from coming back from the war, he remembered his childhood when he used to study the Bible. And he started studying the Bible. In fact, a uh, great controversy tells us that he studied the Bible verse by verse, word by word. And he tried to share what he learned with his friends, but he realized he didn't know enough, so he went back to study some more. And he studied verse by verse all the way until the book of Daniel. And Daniel was such a confusing book to him, he spent the next 10 years studying the book of Daniel. And Daniel was such a confusing book to him, he spent the next 10 years studying the book of Daniel. And Daniel was such a confusing book to him, he spent the next 10 years studying the book of Daniel. And as the Holy Spirit started to reveal some truth to him, 
He started preaching that Jesus is coming. Rather, 1843, but then uh, 1844. So that's how the Adventist movement started. One man who started to sacrifice and pour his life into studying the Bible verse by verse. You know what that says to me? When we don't see William Millers in any in the, our countries where we live in, that means in this country, there may not be one person who spends enough time studying because if one man studied the Bible and prioritized his life to study the word of God to hear the word of the Lord God will turn this country upside down this is why I have such a burden for what I'm going to teach you. Because we need more people studying. We don't need more people doing all the latest techniques of social or public evangelism. Those are important later. We need God's people to come back to the foundation of our faith. How to study. Let's read on. Come back to Ezekiel chapter 37. And we will read from verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. เราจะวางเส้นเอ็นไว้บนเจ้าและจะกระทําให้เนื้อมีมาบนเจ้าและเอาหนังกลุ่มเจ้าและบรรดาบรรจุลงในใจในเจ้าและเจ้าจะมี
เพราะนั้นมันมีชีวิตเต็มที่ไหม Not yet, right? So what's missing? But then, what can't arrive? Let's read on. I love that. Verse nine. Oh God. Then said he unto me. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God: Come from these four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came in unto them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. มาหายใจเข้าไปในคนที่ถูกฆ่าหลังนี้เพื่อให้เขามีชีวิตข้อสิบข้าพเจ้าก็พยากรณ์ดังที่ทรงบัญชาแก่ข้าพเจ้าและลมหายใจก็เข้ามาในกระดูกและกระดูกก็มีชีวิตแล้วก็ยืนขึ้นเป็นกองทัพใหญ่โตจริงๆ so what was the missing component เพราะนั้นอะไรเป็นสิ่งที่ขาดหายไป what did they need เขาต้องการอะไรต้องต้องการ the breath And it says in verse 9 that if he prophesied, or God asked him to prophesy and say to the winds. What is represented by the wind and the breath? The Holy Spirit. In John chapter 3, when Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus, he compares the Holy Spirit to the wind. He says the experience of the Holy Spirit is like the wind because you can't pinpoint exactly what he's doing in your life. สัญลักษณ์ของเครื่องบรรยายบริสุทธิ์เนี่ยเปรียบเหมือนกับลมก็เพราะว่าเราไม่รู้ว่าลมนั้นเริ่มต้นจากที่ไหน But as he moves, as he comes and goes, you know that something is happening, but you can't exactly pinpoint what. แต่เมื่อลมนั้นพัดมาแล้วเนี่ยเราจะสัมผัสได้เราจะรู้ And if for those of us who have studied state of the dead, สำหรับพวกเราที่ได้ศึกษาเกี่ยวกับเรื่องคนที่เสียชีวิตไปแล้ว We know that the word breath is with spirit. เราก็รู้ว่าร่างสัตว์ของคำว่าลมหายใจเนี่ยมันเป็นร่างสัตว์คำเดียวกันกับชีวิตหรือว่าวิญญาณ So the breath of God is sometimes called the spirit of God. เพราะนั้นบางครั้งที่บอกว่าพระวิญญาณของพระเจ้าเนี่ย The breath of God is sometimes called the spirit. ลมหายใจของพระเจ้าเนี่ยก็ใช้เป็นคำเดียวกันกับพระวิญญาณของพระเจ้า So what do we need? เพราะฉะนั้นเราจำเป็นที่จะต้องมี Two simple things for revival. มีจำเป็นสิ่งง่ายๆสองประการ Study the word of God. ศึกษาพระคำของพระเจ้า Not read the word of God. ไม่ใช่แค่อ่านพระคำของพระเจ้า Hear the word of the Lord. That means study the Bible until you hear God's voice. Five minutes a day just browsing the Bible is not going to help you to hear God's voice. A brief study of your Sabbath school lesson is not going to help you to hear God's voice. ศึกษาบทเรียนโรงเรียนวันสปาโตอย่างรวดเร็วนั้นไม่สามารถทำให้เราได้ยินพระสุรเสียงของพระเจ้าได้ We need to study the Bible like Martin Luther, like William Miller studied the Bible. เราจำเป็นที่จะต้องศึกษาพระคำของพระเจ้าเหมือนกับมาร์ติลูเทอร์หรือหรือไม่ก็เหมือนกับวิลเลียมมิลเลอร์ We need to reorient church and our programs so that study of the Bible is number one. เราจะต้องปรับเปลี่ยนรูปแบบของการนมัสการของเราเพื่อทำให้การศึกษาพระคำของพระเจ้านั้นเป็นอันดับหนึ่ง 
And if you find that you're doing too many things in church, but you don't have time to study the Bible, stop doing those things. You know, many times uh, with the churches that I visit, a lot of times the pastor or the elders or the other leaders, they ask me, how can we grow our church? How can we do care group care? How can we do public evangelism? And my response is generally something they don't like to hear. In order for you to grow, it's not about what you should do better. It's not about how many programs you're going to add. The hardest thing for leaders of the church today is to cut away the tradition. You want to grow your church? Less is more. You got to do less things so that God can help you to do more. We got to cut away everything back to the core and do that well. We're going to cut away everything to simplify. We're going to simplify things. So that we have more time to study. But the second thing that we need to do is we need to breathe. It's not enough to study the Bible because the Bible will put on muscle, put on skin, but you still don't have breath. So how do we have breath? We need the Holy Spirit, right? Amen. But how do we have the Holy Spirit? Ask. Ask and you shall receive. So we don't breathe because we don't ask. So the second thing we don't do enough of in church is prayer. Because the more we pray, the more we ask, the more we breathe. Uh, L.O.I. says, uh, and I forget the quote, but you can look it up. She says, prayer is the breath of the soul. Prayer is the breath of the soul. So when I, when I look at my church, how do I know that we're putting on muscle and skin? It's how many people are passionate about studying Bible. So where do I look to know if there are people or how many people in this church are passionate about putting on the muscle and the skin. Where do I look? How many people turn up for Sabbath school? Then after that I want to know, is my church breathing? And where do I go to see if the church is breathing? Personally, I feel 
All our missions, our conferences, our divisions, they should focus on these two metrics. If we take care of these two things, we will have Pentecost And how many people turn up for prayer meeting? I can count it in one hand probably. Oh, you don't have it. Okay. So, I mean, as I go to different churches, I ask them, how many people turn up for prayer meeting? And they tell me one, two, maybe three. Do you know that church where only one or two people turn up for prayer meeting? It's suffocating. It's not real. It's choking. You know what parable that reminds me of? The parable of the four grounds. The parable of the four grounds. Four grounds. Four grounds. The third ground. With the tears or with the uh, <laughs> with the thorns, sorry, with the thorns. That's just choking the uh, the good the good seed. Why is that? What does the thorns represent? The cares, the pleasures. So, brothers and sisters, we are a valley of dry bones. We are a bunch of dry bones trying to do the work of the Lord. We have no word in us. We have no Holy Spirit in us. We're suffocating to death. But we keep talking, well, let's do more evangelism. You have no, we have no power to do evangelism. We need to hear the word of the Lord. And we need to breathe. And if we do that, Ezekiel 37 verse 10 promises us we will have an exceeding great honor. These are the ingredients. This is what we need. Amen. Let's bow heads for a Father in heaven, we thank you for the message in Ezekiel 37. Father, as we reflect on our own life, as we reflect on the life of our church, forgive us, Father, for we are caught up in the everything, uh, all the busyness of church, Yet we, yet we have no time to hear the word of the Lord. And we're so caught up in the busyness of our work and study life. We have no time to gather, to breathe. We have no time to come together to pray for one another. We have no time to pray for the work itself. And yet, we continue to do your work. With no muscle. With no breath. 
Please forgive us, Father. Help us, Father, to return to the old ways. Help us, Father, to make a commitment this morning that we will spend more time in your word. Help us, Father, to make important decisions about the things in our life that we need to cut. So that we can spend time praying for the world. Instead of trying to do it without you. Help us, Father, if we are leaders of our churches. To have the courage to go back and to start to propose changes. That we would help our brothers and sisters to spend more time studying the Bible and to spend more time in prayer. Please continue to be with us throughout this day. To continue to be our teacher and guide. And speak directly to our hearts. For this is my prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen.